I really do love the idea that people have got their own sense of direction. Well, I mean, it may not always be the right direction, but they're taking chances. This, this COVID-19, you know, c- kind of like lit a new fire. I'm going to go do this. I, I'm, I'm going to be this now. I decided no, no. I love how we've allowed that creative energy to turn us into stronger individuals. And for some, it might be a little bit weaker, but the, you know, change and challenge is one of those things that we, we have to learn how to adopt. But, but we aren't the same people. And, and we get deeper and deeper into the flow of creative energy. But do you understand it? Have you even thought about what is moving through you and why? Unplug because we will always say yes to creativity. Totally uncut because we all make mistakes. So turn it into a tool. This is Arrow Unplugged. Oh boy. Have you ever had one of those days? You wake up, your body is aching. I mean, there's so much pain cruising through your body. Yes, yesterday, I read in an article... And and this is just going to prove, this is going to be a time stamp is what it's going to be. I read in an article, what is the difference between the common cold and the Omicron, the Omicron variant from COVID-19? What is the difference? And this is what the article said, the test. That's it, the test. They have the same exact effects, but it's the test that will tell you if you have the variant or not. <laughs> what? Oh, Oh, man, 21 months into this, and we're still talking about it. Man, no wonder it's so difficult to tap into the availability of thought. You know, although the sign reads no entry, the ambition has still got to succeed for you and for me. It doesn't matter how you don't want to create or to do something. You've got to keep moving. We've got to keep growing. We can't teach ourselves to slip behind a momentary lapse in spirit and presentation. I write. That's what I do. I write because it helps me wake up in the morning to wake up the imagination. But is is that really a good thing to do the first thing in the morning? And and I have to answer that question in the way of saying, well, well, runners get up and go jogging the first thing in the morning. What what about those that pump weights? They they get up and go to the gym. So why would it be so evil of me to get up and just work my words? To get inside, to influence and to inspire, to listen without judgment. No critical altercations are caused by my method of madness generated by a yesterday that I can't change. Waking up as a writer is kind of a chore sometimes, but the joggers have got to think the same thing. I used to do morning radio. Do you think it was easy to wake up at 2.45 in the morning and to be, hey, what's going on, man? At 6 o'clock, welcome to a brand new day. We're on our way to a high today of 95 degrees. Thank you so much for choosing this radio station because we're going to get you to work in a great mood and get you home later on this afternoon. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god the head and heart have got to be completely beaten up by dreams because the how, how does it do what it does and the writer can't even get in there and change the dreams that i have or what you have therefore there's got to be some sort of discipline in the morning that takes all of that invisibleness and, and and it puts it in places where it won't infect or dissect your present place of now in this new day. Writing so early is a choice and it's also a battle. And I got to tell you, I have no clue as to what any of this is going to do on the page. A million pictures moving through each and every one of our ways of thinking. And on this page, the only thing that we've got is a 28 year veteran, a daily writing veteran to help point the way. Hey, it's Arrow. This is The Daily Mess, a chronological walk through an everyday world. I am a daily writer. And and that's what you got to deal with when you're a daily writer. Those moments where, <sighs> just not in the mood. Oh, why am I here? Oh, oh. and you start creating excuses. And you, it's, just, it's just things get in the way. But you can't. You can't. You just keep pushing. Joggers do it all the time. I said it before. People go to the gym every day. You wake up. You grab that credit card and you go to Amazon. Uh, 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 uh. Where's your discipline there? This is the Daily Mess. The spirit of presence is mindfully personal to each and every one of us that practice it. Can I say that again? The spiritual of presence is mindfully personal to each and every one of us who practice it. It, it, It's kind of like a prayer. We can openly talk all you want about what is moving through you, but those that are listening may not be fully connected. That's one of my greatest challenges, to feel what's in the wind, then hand it to someone that I've never met. 
We hear preachers all the time exclaim, I don't know who this message is for. I don't know who's going to receive it, but I am here to give it to you. I hear it all the time. The same is true for writers. A word, a thought, a sentence becoming a paragraph, only to be reminded of Eleanor Rigby from the Beatles. She wore a face that she kept in a jar by the door. Who was it for? The spirit of presence. Allowing the universe to have a voice in your place of now, then setting it free to roam the streets to find another. Mindfulness. It's received, but it cannot be the same by those who have received it. Isn't that what feeds the source of conversation? But what if, and only if, the experience is put in a box stored beneath another locked away box in an attic, now painted over with dust and cobwebs? I call it hider writers. Hider writers are those that can take a thought, they put it down, they either throw it away or they put it in a box or they put it somewhere to be later found or to be never found until the passing or the transition and someone picks it up and says, holy crap, look at what I just found. The spirit of presence is mindfully personal to each and every one of us practicing it. What you receive and what I receive are two completely different things, but where the conversation begins is how we talk about how it was received and how we can take what has been received and give it back to the street. But we face that challenge also where people take it in and they keep it. They leave it there and it festers or it grows into this beautiful flower. But you know how flowers are. They last how many days? It's like aspirin. I've always wondered, how is it that a leave, you know, a leave, the painkiller? How does a leave know that, that you got pain in your back? Have you seen that on the box? It says, for back pain, a leave. H- how does it know to go there? I want to be that smart one day. Let's write about it. On those days that you can't write, write about something that's just really kind of not, not normal. Like a ray of light that's shooting through your living room. Aliens are walking onto this planet on that ray of light. We all think, oh, so pretty, so beautiful. But there's aliens coming onto the planet. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> the spirit of presence is mindfully personal to each and every one of us who are practicing it. Keep practicing. I'm Arrow, and that's The Daily Mess.